Hi, you're here because you're a big fan of the movie Morbius. So much so that you've seen the movie Morbius maybe two to three times, but would still like some further clarification for what happens in the post credits. So here's the obligatory, hey, spoiler alert. I'm about to spoil Morbius, specifically the post credits. So if you could leave a like on this video, that'd be great. Not for me, but to share your love for the movie Morbius, the big Dracula starring our Lord and savior, Jagrid Leto. Okay, so with the first post credits, a purple rift appears in the sky, presumably the one from the end of No Way Home, or the start of No Way Home, or from the TV show Loki, or perhaps it's from Doctor Strange 2. I don't know. Then, Adrian Toomes, confirmed to be the same one from the MCU, appears in a prison cell for some reason, and Michael Keaton is like, oh, I hope the food's better here than where I'm from. Then we cut to a news report that says, Adrian Toomes is likely to be released because in this universe, he's just some guy. He doesn't even have a big vulture suit. Or does he? Because in the second post credit scene, we see Dr. Michael Vampire driving out to a remote location in front of a spooky abandoned house. He hears something approaching and lo and behold, it's Adrian Toomes, but in a slightly different robot vulture costume. It has been confirmed not to be the same as his previous one and that he had to make a new one for this universe. Then the conversation goes as follows. Vulture, thanks for meeting me, Doc. I've been reading about you. I'm not sure how I got here has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out, but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up and do some good. And Mickey Drax says, intriguing. The whole thing pointing towards a Sinister Six of sorts, I guess. You know what, this whole thing's got a real air of, hey, this is clearly a late inclusion and we couldn't get Michael Keaton back, hence why the vulture mask doesn't remove in the second post credits. And also, can somebody who watches this please come up with the most plausible and airtight fan theory to explain what we've presented to you here so this can make sense? And look, I'd love to help. But I'm confused because the director has confirmed that this movie exists in the same universe as Venom. They even include a line from the film, you know, the one that's in the trailer where he's like, boo, I'm Venom. That's one of the few connective hints that wasn't removed for the final cut. So we know that the Venom Morbius universe isn't the MCU. So what is it? Well, it could potentially be the Raimi universe because of this image of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man that appeared in the trailer, but also not in the final film. And also it's actually from that Spider-Man PS4 game. But look, it still could be that because the Daily Bugle also exists in this universe and it has the exact same font and logo as the Raimi universe. Which, okay, yeah, that kind of, is that, that's something, right? But also, this universe already had a Venom. Are there two separate Venoms by pure happenstance that appear a decade apart? And if that's the case, why doesn't the Tom Hardy version recognize Spider-Man when he crossed dimensions? Surely he would have seen him on the news. So I guess it could be, you know, the Andrew Garfield universe. But again, that doesn't explain why Tom Hardy has never seen or heard of a Spider-Man before. So, okay, I'm gonna do something for you, Sony. I'm going to offer up a solution to this, but you have to give me money. If you take my idea, you owe me $100,000. This is not a joke because I'm fixing this universe I'm going to do it right now. The director has confirmed that a Spider-Man does exist in this universe. Which, okay, fine. Venom hasn't seen him yet, I guess. Now, you could make a brand new Peter Parker. Sure. But what you need to understand about movie-going audiences is, not only do they love a thing they recognize, but also a slightly newer thing. So you could turn this world into the introduction to that of a live-action Miles Morales. The original Miles Morales is from a different universe from the mainline comics. And seeing as we haven't seen his origin in live-action as of yet, you could just do that. I mean, sure, they were sort of building to that in the MCU, which is kind of a shame because, you know, I feel like it's probably better suited to having him link to Donald Glover and pair up with Tom Holland. I mean, I guess you could do all that anyways. But hey, if you want to put anything of interest into the Venom Morbiverse, you could just slap down Miles Morales like a big wet blanket over this metaphorical bin fire that you've built. There you go, I fixed it. That'll be $100,000, please. And you know what? I'll actually even give it to charity. I'm not joking. You might also be wondering, you know, you watching this, didn't Moon Knight just release? What does Moon Knight have to do with all of this? It would make sense if they connected on some level. It would be terrific brand synergy. But you know what? They don't connect though. Not in the slightest. But we are recapping that show right here on this channel every week if you do want to check it out. Links below. Now, because we're entering the second month of Monthbius, our annual celebration of the character and movie Mr. Morbius the Dracula Man, we're going to be talking all about this latest entry in the Sony Pictures universe of Marvel movies. Or SPUM, 
if you'd prefer. We're covering that movie in full, spoiler-heavy detail, over on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows this coming Monday. Really excited to just peel back the layers on this exciting new franchise. And then you get, you know, a couple of levels deep and you go, hang on a minute, this isn't an onion. This is a small round hornet's nest. Oh, wait, all the hornets are dead. So I guess that's good. Anyways, I guess my point is, you can actually hear that episode a day early on Sunday over at BigSandwich.co. That's like our private Patreon service if you do want to sign up. There's a bunch of exclusive stuff like movie commentary tracks, bonus podcasts, and of course, early videos. But thanks for watching this video. Really appreciate it. And happy month to everybody. To all of us. Goodbye. Goodbye.